Assalamu alaikum dear students. This is your science teacher and today the chapter that we are going to discuss is movements in the body. As we all know that all living organisms are made up of cells. Cells are the basic structural and functional unit of life. Depending upon the number of cells, an organism can be a unicellular or a multicellular. In unicellular organism, a single cell performs all the life-sustaining functions. While in case of multicellular organisms, similar cells combine to form tissues which combine to form an organ which performs the specific function. Moving on to our main topic which is about movement and locomotion. Movement is defined as the change in the part or whole of a body. When this movement results in the change in the position of the body, it's termed as locomotion. So there's a clear cut difference between the movement and the locomotion. Different orga organisms perform different types of motion, like some organisms crawl, some slither, some move, some run, some swim and fly. So let us witness the movement of the different organisms in this video. Animals move in different ways from one place to another. They show various movements such as crawling, floating, swimming and flying. Let's discuss each movement in detail. Animals like earthworms and starfish show crawling movement. Earthworms move with the help of circular and longitudinal muscles that run circularly and then to the entire length of the body. They also possess numerous bristle-like structures called setae along the length of the body. During locomotion, the circular and longitudinal muscles contract alternately, thereby shortening and lengthening the body to bring about movement. Starfish are water animals. They also show crawling movement. Starfish move with the help of tube-like structures called tube feet. Each tube feet ends in a sucker that helps a starfish adhere to the surface and in locomotion. Animals such as frogs show various kinds of movements such as floating, leaping and swimming. During floating, Frogs simply float on the water surface without applying force for swimming. The eye, mouth and nostrils remain above water while the rest of the body is submerged in water. Frogs are active swimmers. While swimming, they use their hind limbs to push back water. The webs present between their toes act as oars and help them push water back and thus move forward. Both the limbs move alternately while swimming slow and together while swimming fast. In addition to floating and swimming, frogs also show leaping movement. They leap with the help of hind legs that are folded in Z-like fashion at rest. They jump or leap in air by stretching their hind legs, which act as a spring, thus throwing their body up in air. On landing, the hind legs fold back, while the forelegs straighten forward to absorb the shock. Did you wonder how fishes can swim easily in water? Well, they move easily in water with the help of their streamlined body and fins. Fishes show two types of movements, yawing and pitching. In yawing movement, fishes move their body from a straight line in order to change direction or to make a turn in the same horizontal plane. Whereas, in pitching movement, fishes rotate up and down in a vertical plane. 
there are certain other animals that can fly such as birds and insects. Let's see how these animals move. Certain insects like houseflies and mosquitoes possess only one pair of wings called four wings which helps in flying. On the contrary, several others such as butterflies, moths and dragonflies possess two pairs of wings, forewing and hindwing. Birds fly with the help of wings. For flying, they employ two methods, flapping and gliding. During flapping, they produce two different kind of strokes, upward and downward. During a powerful downward stroke, the wings push the air downwards, thereby pushing the body in the forward direction. Whereas in an upward stroke, the wings slightly rotate and bend at the end or the wrist to reduce resistance against air. In gliding movement, birds stretch their wings longitudinally and do not flap them. The path of their flight is downward. The tail acts as a rudder or brake during flight. So we learn about the movement of the different organisms. Now let us move to the movement of the human body. In human body, muscles and skeleton play a key role in the movement. In the normal human being, there are about 206 bones present. The function of the skeletal system in the human being is that it is the framework of the bones which provides shape and support to the body and is also responsible for the manufacture of RBCs in the bone marrow. To understand more about the parts of the skeletal system, let us see the following video. The skeleton is the framework of the body. A tall building needs a framework of steel and metal to hold it up. Similarly, the body too needs a framework. The skeletal framework supports the body, protects internal organs and gives the body shape and strength. It is because of bones that we are able to move. The human skeleton is made up of 206 bones. Some bones are quite large while others are very small. Bones are made of living cells. This is why they grow as you get older. The bones of the body are hard but they are all covered in tiny holes. These holes allow nerves and blood vessels to enter the bone. Inside the bones there is space for blood vessels and nerves. The long bones of the body are filled with a soft fatty substance called bone marrow. All the blood cells in our body are manufactured in the bone marrow. The red cells carry oxygen to different as new parts of the body and white blood cells fight infection. The skull. The skull is made up of eight flat bones. These are joined together very closely. The skull protects the brain. The part of the skeleton under the face is made up of 14 bones. The jaws. The upper jaw is part of the skull. Only the lower jaw can be moved. This enables humans to chew food and to talk. The backbone or spine. The backbone is made up of 33 small bones. These are called vertebrae. The vertebrae are all linked together. They form the main axis of the body. They protect the nerves and important blood vessels that run down from the brain. They protect what is called the spinal cord. The ribs. Humans have 12 pairs of ribs. These form a cage to protect the heart and lungs. The ribs are curved bones which are joined to the backbone and the breast bone. The last two pairs of ribs are called floating ribs because they are joined only to the backbone. The limbs. The bones of the arms are joined to the spine by the shoulder girdle and collar bone. In the upper arm there is only one bone. In the lower arms there are two. Many small bones make up the wrist, palm and fingers. So in this video we discussed about the various parts such as the skull, the rib cage, the spinal cord and the limbs. One of the important things that helps in the movement and the locomotion is the joint. 
A joint is a place where two or more bones meet. Depending upon the type of joint, a joint can be movable, slightly movable or immovable. So let us look about the different types of the joints in detail which include the hinge joint, the pivot joint, ball and socket joint and the gliding joint. Types of joints In daily life, we carry out different types of body movements such as walking, dancing and running. During these movements, we are able to bend or rotate only some of the parts of the body, not all. Did you ever wonder why? We can move only those parts of the body that are joined together. For example, we can move the shoulder, the elbow and the knee. A place where two body parts are joined together is called a joint. In the human body are found many different types of joints. Let us learn about them. Ball and socket joint. In a ball and socket joint, the rounded end of one bone fits into the cavity of another bone. An example of a ball and socket joint is the shoulder arm joint. A ball and socket joint allows movement in all directions. Hinge joint. A hinge joint looks like a hollow half cylinder with a rolled up cylinder set inside it. The elbow has a hinge joint. A hinge joint allows only back and forth movement. Pivot joint. A pivot joint allows rotation around an axis. In this type of joint, a cylindrical bone rotates inside another ring-shaped bone. The joint where our neck joins the head is a pivot joint. A pivot joint allows forward and backward as well as right and left movements. Fixed joint. As the name suggests, a fixed joint is fixed and does not allow any movement between bones. The joints in the skull are fixed joints. So in this chapter you understood about the movement of the different organisms such as snake, birds, fish, etc. And you also discussed about the movement in the human beings in which you discussed about the various parts and the types of the joints present in the human body. Hope you understood this video. Inshallah, dear students, we will meet in our next video. Till then, take care and Allah Hafiz.